Okay, who here has traveled outside the country? Who here would like to travel outside the country? <coughs> well, if you'd like to do so, there's something that you might need to touch on, on before you go out there. Nonverbal communication. Going out in the world, nonverbal communication is a big thing, and simply going to shake someone's hand can be very offensive. For an example, in Europe, close friends, they go and kiss each other on the cheek. Whenever we see our friends, we either give them like a little bit of a bro hug or a knuckle touch, a high five, just something simple like that. So today, I'd like to inform you about nonverbal communication in different cultures, uh, the influence of nonverbal and intercultural classrooms, and how to approach intercultural and nonverbal communication in businesses. So nonverbal non communication is different in different cultures. So according to the APA Handbook of Nonverbal Communication written by David, Matsumoto, who has a doctorate in psychology, and Hui Song Huang, who received her PhD from the Center of Psycholo Psychological Studies at the Graduate School of Human Behavior, culture has a strong and persuasive influence on nonverbal communication. So, what that's really saying is that different uh, cultures do things differently. Uh, here in America, in Europe, uh, whenever we meet someone, we shake their hand. And over in uh, uh, Asia, East Asia, they bow to one another rather than do the shaking the hands. Also in uh, Thailand, they bow, to, uh, bow their head to pray. In the Middle East, they bow their head with their hand to their heart. So something simple like that. It might not seem a little bit uh, that big to us, but it means a lot to different cultures. Also, uh, Fernando Poyatos, who is a leading intercultural scholar, has written 10 books in the field of nonverbal communication. And the book, which I read, New Perspective of Nonverbal Communication, tells a story about his friend Tom, who's actually from the Youngstown area, so it's very close to us. Tom went over to Spain to visit, and he winked at uh, Fernando, gave him an OK symbol, uh, did not shake a woman's hands because he did not think it was appropriate, and uh, the way that he was holding his silverware during his meal was incorrect over there. So doing all those things, Fernando picked up on that and realized that Tom was going to struggle a little bit being over in Spain. So those simple things that are in everyday culture to us is very different, just right across the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, that's a little bit of information about different cultures. Now I'd like to go into the uh, classroom. So in Australia classrooms, Dr. Ping Yang, who's a senior lecturer in linguistics and academic course advisor for Master of Arts in the School of Humanities and Communication Arts in the University of Western Sydney in Australia said that's important for all the faculty and staff and all their workers and their professors there to have good nonverbal communication skills because Australia is a very uh, well um, travel to country where a lot of students go and study abroad so they need to have be touched up on their nonverbals because most of the students aren't going to be able to speak the native language there so uh, simply knowing okay and yes and no in uh, several different languages nonverbally is very important and they say that a nonverbal communication is used as much more than uh, verbal communication as it is so as you can see nonverbals uh, and from study abroad and classroom perspective is also very important and finally, nonverbal communication in international business. Um, Daphne Jameson, who has a PhD in English and who actively studies and teaches about how language is used in business, said the field of intercultural business communication should more strongly emphasize how to understand one's own individual cultural identity. So we need to know how to handle business in your own culture before trying to learn it in others. Say you're uh, trying to go over into the Middle East and uh, settle business. Simply shaking out your, sticking out your hand first could uh, be a big no-no and could just ruin the business instantly. And you have built up these great connections beforehand, about to sign a contract, about to make a big deal, and a simple uh, handshake, which is seen uh, bad in a different culture, can throw that all off course. And also, Dr. William Self, who, has an, who is an associate chair, an associate professor in the Department of Communication Studies at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, gave an example that despite no wrongdoing, one or more parties may inter interpret another party to be in breach of an agreement based on conduct alone. So, as I said before, doing something wrong non-verbally can be a breach in conduct for the business that you're doing, and it can just throw it all, all off course. So, today I've shown you the importance of intercultural non-verbal communication and the fact that it is different in different cultures and it's important in intercultural classroom and how it should be approached when dealing with intercultural business. And now I challenge you to do some research of intercultural nonverbal so that someday when you go out into the real world, you aren't one of the ones that gives an okay symbol over in Spain, which is not accepted. Thank you very much.